Hey, it's me, Casey, and I got a question for you. Feel like having a little adult fun with me? I hope you said yes, because the Steam Room guys and I just put out two adult coloring books. Yeah, sexy illustrations of male-male romance with naughty, hilarious captions. It's called Bromantic Bliss, and it's a hoot. Two sexy, silly, sassy coloring books that are sure to entertain you for hours. You can find them on Amazon or the SteamyStoriesPodcast.com website. Check them out and let me know what you think. I hope you love them and start coloring. By the way, they're for adults only. So, kiddies, you'll have to wait until you're 18 to get in on the fun. Now, on with the show. Dr. Evan Thompson was excited to immerse himself in his oceanographic research. Now comfortably situated on a secluded island in the South Pacific, this lone, handsome scientist planned on embarking on his vital marine research in peace. The last thing the solitary young man expected was to find company on the remote, deserted island he now called home. Who, or what, was on the island with him? And was it friendly? The answer turned out that he and the mysterious stranger he'd encounter would end up being more than just friends. Settle in, my landlubber friends. The tide's high, and I've just adjusted my compass for a slightly different steamy story today. I hope you're ready to set sail for a little island in the South Pacific to meet a striking young doctor named Evan. Because he's about to make a startling discovery you don't want to miss. Hey everyone, it's me, Casey, your host for Steamy Stories, the podcast where bromance turns... Oh, bromosexual. Today's Steamy Stories is about a loner on a tiny tropical island who falls in love with... Well, you'll see. So, sit back, relax, and let your imagination run wild as I tell you a wild, unbelievable, but true, fish tale. The sun rose over the horizon, casting a golden glow on the serene waters surrounding a remote island. Dr. Evan Thompson, a marine biologist, stood at the edge of the Pacific Ocean, his eyes sparkling excitedly. His passion for the sea was palpable, and he couldn't wait to immerse himself in the research at this faraway place. At 28 years old, Dr. Thompson had already been featured on the cover of several magazines. He was proud of his accomplishments in oceanographic studies. He was also aware that the scientific journals featured him as often as they did because of his dark, stunning good looks. Evan, as he preferred to be called, wasn't much for the gym, although you'd never know it by looking at him. His physique resulted from swimming, snorkeling, and spending time wading through the resistance of the salt water. As celebrated as Evan was, he actively avoided the spotlight. Fame, fortune, and notoriety weren't interesting to him. He was a quiet, shy person who wanted nothing more than to be alone with his research and discover innovative ways to save the planet and its wildlife. Sure, he missed having company and someone to talk to and hold, but most men he met didn't interest him. For that reason, he chose to always study in the furthest reaches of the planet, in solitude. Evan impatiently geared up to go for a quick, nearby snorkel in the shallow tide pool just outside his door. He slipped out of his dusty traveling clothes and stood in the middle of his laboratory naked. His hairless, lean, muscular body looked like he was preparing for a centerfold spread in an old hunk magazine. Should I bother putting on swim trunks? There's not another person for miles. Perhaps not even on the entire island. Why bother with clothes if they're not needed? Evan chuckled as he bashfully reached for his trunks. 
<laughs> I'm too modest to swim all natural just yet. Maybe in time. For now, I'll put on the proper snorkeling attire. He was excited to explore the nearby reef around the bend, hidden off the most secluded part of Starfish Island. The island was a small tropical paradise not found on any map or Google Earth search. It was a tiny, pristine ecosystem kept quiet by a select few marine biologists who were fortunate enough to know about it. The nearby cove was a hidden gem, teeming with life. Evan marveled at the vibrant array of diverse marine creatures that called it home, from colorful fish darting through the crystal clear waters to tiny crabs scurrying along the sandy floor. He was excited to be conducting a study on the impact of climate change on these fragile ecosystems, determined to find ways to protect them. Evan splashed through the crystal clear water as he strolled down the beach. The water was warm yet refreshing on his ankles. He couldn't help but smile as he began observing the marine life scurrying between his legs as he walked. As he moved deeper towards the tidal pool, he spotted something unusual floating in the reef. His heart skipped a beat as he approached. Something was wrong. As Evan approached, his breath quickened. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Could it be? Yes, it was a person. Perhaps a shipwrecked seaman from a boat gone astray? Whatever it was, the man was unconscious and in distress. Evan hastily dropped his snorkeling gear and ran to help the drowned individual. As he approached the shallow pool of water, his eyes betrayed him. What am I seeing? A handsome, muscular man intertwined with a giant shark or sea creature? Will this be a gruesome sight and a terrible reminder that humans may not be as high up on the food chain as we believe? As Evan got closer, the view became even stranger. Now, less than ten feet away from him, seemed to be a mythical creature he had only read about in folklore and seen in his dreams. A merman. What is going on here? Is this an elaborate joke? This can't be real. Whatever the case, one thing was clear. It was in trouble. Evan quickly knelt by the half-man, half-sea creature. The being's top half was spectacularly trim and toned. Each muscle striation was clearly defined, and his arms and pectorals bulged with veins. Its tail was a brilliant spectrum of iridescent colors. It glistened in the clear, tranquil water, half-submerged. The creature's masculine face was unlike any handsome man he had ever seen. His complexion was smooth and flawless. His hair was a lush, long mane, the color of the dark ember and sand, with a jawline solid and pronounced. Just being in this majestic creature's presence was intimidating. Evan quickly felt for a pulse on its neck. It was faint. He applied his knowledge of biology to attempt to rescue the creature's life. Since the top half of the merman was human, CPR seemed like a good option for treatment. Evan tilted the merman's head back and exhaled powerfully into his mouth while compressing his chest in a rhythmic pattern. After several stress-filled minutes, the merman let out a mighty cough. Water spouted from his mouth, and his lungs filled with air. Evan jumped back. He wasn't sure if he was frightened or surprised that breathing air into an aquatic mammal was the correct treatment. He was shocked that he could help save its life by giving it oxygen. The creature was weak and disoriented. Evan knew he had to rescue him from the reef, so he quickly fashioned a makeshift tank in his nearby laboratory to transport and house it in so that he may attempt to nurse it back to health. Each day, Evan tended to the creature's wounds and bruises. He couldn't help but be amazed by the merman's beauty and majesty. Although still unconscious, the merman seemed to be healing remarkably quickly. Every day brought vast improvements in his coloring and strength. Less than two days later, the creature woke up from its unresponsive state. Evan sat working at his desk, 
not ten feet from the aquarium that housed his healing guest, when a deep voice spoke to him. Don't be startled. I wanted to properly introduce myself. At first, Evan thought he was hallucinating. Or, at the very least, someone had entered the lab, saw the creature, and was now attempting to make a bad joke. Much to his surprise, the beast was awake and leaning on the edge of the tank where Evan had placed him to heal. The merman had hypnotic, piercing ocean blue eyes and a curious, warm, inviting smile. His sultry, eloquent voice said, I'm Zor. I wanted to thank you for helping me. I am indebted to you for your kindness and care. Evan was first shocked. He sat motionless, then spoke with a silly, obvious question. You speak? Zor laughed. <laughs> yes, I speak. I'm fluent in three marine languages. And three land languages. Evan slowly shuffled back in his chair, asking, How is this possible? I didn't think mermaids were real. The fact that you're here and can speak, it, it's blowing my mind. Zor laughed again. <laughs> Just because you've never met something, or someone, doesn't mean they don't exist. And for the record, in your own language, males of our species are mermen. Evan assured him that he knew he was a merman and that his brain hadn't processed the information quickly enough to use the proper terminology. He continued questioning his patient. Well, how are you feeling? A and am I the only human who has ever seen or rather met a merman? Evan politely smiled. Zor responded, I'm feeling much better now. Thank you. Almost one hundred percent. And no, people throughout the ages were made aware of us. Sailors have interacted with us for ages. More recently, my species worked out a treaty with your land governments, so we may both peacefully coexist. That said, we are, say, largely hidden from humans. For our protection. Honestly, I'm freaking out, Evan flatly stated, unable to take his eyes off the magnificent creature before him. Was it the flowing, opulent hair, the crystal eyes, the strikingly handsome face, or that rock-hard cut body? Whatever was happening, Evan could feel himself becoming short of breath and turned on by the merman before him. He clumsily fiddled with his pen, stating, I'm sorry, my brain didn't record your name. I'm too shocked to remember what you called yourself. The merman spoke again with his sexy siren voice. In your language, I am called Zor. He reached out his burly arm to shake Evan's hand. Evan shook it and stuttered, I have so many questions, uh, so much I need to learn about you and the ocean. Are you feeling well enough to talk with me? Uh, can I get you something first? Maybe something to drink? Evan said as he readied himself to help his guest. Zor replied, I'd love a glass of water. Sure, Evan quickly replied and ran to the sink, where he filled a glass with filtered water and returned. As soon as he handed it to Zor, Zor poured the water into his tank, submerged, and smiled. They both laughed at the silly sophomoric joke Zor played on him. The two enjoyed an instant chemistry and felt an ease settle in as they hunkered down to a long night of getting to know each other better. The following morning, Evan woke to find Zor insisting on taking him for a swim with him. Time for me to repay you for your kindness and care. If you set up your scuba gear, I'll show you treasures of the ocean that no human has ever seen before. Evan shuddered with excitement as he quickly disrobed from his t-shirt and jeans and squeezed into a wetsuit, 
grabbing his air tanks and rebreather. The laboratory was Oceanside, so transporting Zor into the water just outside the door wasn't challenging. Once he was in his home environment, Zor splashed with delight. His opalescent tail reflected the sun into the water like a mirrored ball into a discotheque. Zor's toned body moved through the water like a razor cutting through jelly. He was a marvel in every sense of the word. As Evan watched breathlessly, Zor smiled and reached out his hand. Time to go for a swim. Hold on tight. I go fast. Zor grabbed Evan's hand and with a quick burst of energy, easily glided through the water with Evan. They skimmed over brightly colored reefs, schools of small fish, and kelp forests. The blue ocean turned a brilliant turquoise as they approached a deep aquifer in an uncharted part of the sea. Zor spoke to Evan underwater as clearly as he did on land. Let me tell you what you're seeing and where we are. If you need anything, or need to go to the surface, just signal me. I'll take good care of you. Evan nodded, then attempted to focus on the marine animals Zor enthusiastically showed him. Ancient coral reefs teemed with life, but no matter what was pointed out to him under the sea, nothing was nearly as magnificent as the merman before him. Evan kept repeating to himself, oh, Calm down, I, uh, s slow your breath, and don't use up all your oxygen. Getting turned on by the sexy creature will only make you use your tank quicker. Evan's gratitude for what he was experiencing grew. He thought, In one day I've learned more than in ten years of study. This information is priceless and invaluable in helping me save the oceans and prepare my plea for conservation. The two teased and tumbled through the giant kelp forests on the ocean floor, laughing and flirting with each other. Neither was paying attention or aware of the impending threat to their safety. As the nearby fish scattered, the waters grew eerily silent. Without warning, the seas started churning. The current shifted instantly, and like a wall of bricks, the seafloor came up between them. Evan tumbled without any sense of up or down, thrashing through the mighty kelp like a ragdoll in a storm, unaware of which direction he should swim or where the ocean's surface was. Zor, too, was caught in the powerful stream, each pulled apart and unable to save the other. What seemed an eternity was merely a matter of minutes. The water settled as quickly as it started, and this time, unlike before, Evan was alone. Zor was nowhere in sight. Where am I? How far out to sea am I? If Zor doesn't return, how will I return to land? Panic struck Evan as he instantly feared for his life in the dark, far-out waters of the Pacific Ocean. Evan surfaced and pulled off his gear, knowing that the first thing necessary for survival was to conserve oxygen and find his bearings. The water spread out vast, and as far as he could see, nothing was in sight. Evan was fortunate in that he could see the sun's position in the sky. He knew it would help him identify his location. Oh, was Zor going to be all right? Evan feared he couldn't help his friend. He knew he couldn't search the waters below for him. He's a merman, Evan thought. If either of us have the advantage, it's him. I'm sure he'll be fine. With that comforting thought... He was careful not to waste any more time. He started swimming to shore with whatever oxygen and strength he had left. Once back on the beach, Evan collapsed from exhaustion. He was grateful to be alive, but physically spent from the swim back. Evan could feel the warm tropical air on his weary body. The wet sand felt comforting as it cradled his tired back. I need to close my eyes and rest. I'm too exhausted to even stand, he thought, as he slipped into a deep sleep. The following morning found Evan still asleep on the beach, 
The bright sun and the warmth from its rays signaled to him it was time to get up and get home. Evan dusted himself off from the salt and sand and hurried back to his laboratory, where his French roast awaited him. Nothing sounds better than a hot cup of coffee right now. The day dragged on and on, with his mind wondering if his friend was okay. Did he drown? What strange aquatic anomaly separated the two in the kelp forest? Why did his mind keep returning to his friend? Was it because he was concerned for his safety? Did he miss having someone to talk to? Or did he develop deeper feelings for the merman? Each night that week, Evan would walk down to the tidal pool and look into the sunset. He knew it was a futile gesture. But maybe... Just maybe, if his friend was alive and okay, he'd return to him. Evan quietly sat as the dusk turned from orange to purple, and finally to black. He was reluctant to leave as the night grew late, knowing that as soon as he returned to his laboratory, the evening, and all hope to see Zor again, would be over for the day. The following week, Evan kept busy with his work. He couldn't leave his desk to visit the tidal pool anymore. In truth, he felt silly about going. Not because he didn't miss having a friend, but because, as a scientist, he wondered if Zor was real at all. He wondered if he had been alone too long and became so desperate for human contact, so his mind fabricated a mythical companion for him to talk to. Well... Hopefully I've returned to rational thoughts and sanity, he told himself. It's scary what the human mind can trick itself into believing when left alone for too long. Evan immersed himself once again in a life of studying, reading, and exploring the ocean's mysteries. He again settled into his work in solitude. Shortly after that, Evan was preparing a late lunch for himself, when the kettle's whistle shrieked, Evan often left the kettle on the fire for several minutes. Why interrupt a vital thought or discovery for a poorly managed cup of tea? Besides, the whistle wasn't bothering anyone. He was miles and miles from civilization. If he didn't mind the sound, who else would? Finally, he got up from his desk to lower the flame. The kettle quieted, but the piercing whistling sound kept wailing. What could it be? Where's that sound coming from? It certainly wasn't inside the small facility he called home anymore. Perhaps a generator had gone haywire outside? An alarm of some form was sounding? Evan left his tea and shuffled to the front door to investigate. His facility was waterfront, so bright, reflective sand started a few steps down from the humble porch. A silhouetted figure was evident in the breaking waves in the water fifty feet away. The glare from the beach and ocean made it difficult to see, but the sound was unmistakable. A loud siren was emitting from the water, from an imposing figure in the sea. Evan cautiously walked towards the dark, human-like shape. As he got closer, he saw it resembled a man. Could it be? Was he, in fact, saner than he thought? Was last week's discovery real? Did he actually meet a merman? Could this be Zor singing a siren song? Yes! Yes, it was! Evan's trepidatious walk turned into a jubilant run as he jogged down the beach and into the shallow seawater. It was Zor, calling out to him, eager to take Evan into his arms. Nothing was said between the two of them. Zor instantly scooped Evan up in his tremendous arms and kissed him fully, deeply, passionately, as his wild, wet hair whipped around them. Evan squeezed his body against Zor's bare, rock-hard chest. Neither of the two men relented in their embrace. Zor's mighty tail swooped around and pulled Evan closer to him, both playfully tumbling in shallow, crashing waves on the beach. 
Evan didn't hesitate as he pulled off his clothes so that he could feel his entire body pressed into Zor. Why bother with these restrictive shorts and shirt? Time to be free, he thought. Let's go for a swim, Evan insisted as he pulled his friend even closer. Zor smiled sweetly as he agreed to take Evan out in the sea again for some fun and frolic. Evan turned somber as his voice cracked with concern for his friend. I was worried you were hurt. Possibly killed. That water cyclone was terrible. I don't know what happened. Are you okay now? Evan stated in a desperate gasp. Zor looked slightly uncomfortable as he answered, Yes, that was terrible. But I need to tell you, that wasn't a natural phenomenon. That was a school of other mermen. They thought I was in jeopardy and attempted to save me from you. They took me home, where I needed to converse with our elders and explain what happened between us last week. I finally convinced them of what a wonderful man you were and persuaded them to let me return to you. They initially denied my request, but when I told them about my feelings towards you, they agreed to let me return. Evan smiled. You have feelings for me? He asked, almost bashful at his silliness. Zor laughed deeply as he answered, <laughs> I thought that kiss may have given you an indication of how I felt about you. Evan wondered out loud, A man and a merman? How could this work? I guess there's more to a relationship than sex, huh? Zor belly laughed. <laughs> we both have the same parts. Only mine is cleverly tucked into my tail. It's all right, though. I'm familiar with the human male anatomy. Small as it may be. It was then that Evan knew that he was in for a treat later, when Zor would show him the prize he had won. Evan realized that he would have to switch out his old mattress in his cabin for a waterbed. Chevron may timbers, matey. Now that was quite a yarn. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a bit different than our other steamy stories, but well, we like to keep things exciting around here. Try new things. Let me know in your comments if you enjoyed today's fish tale. Steamy Stories is the podcast where bromance turns... Mm, bromosexual. Each story is written by J.C. Calciano and narrated by me, Casey. So be sure to tune in next week when we tell you another steamy story. But until then... Later, bro.